My colleagues of the United States House of Representatives, is it, a high, it is a high honor to welcome you and your families to the 114th Congress. To our newest members, it is a special pleasure to give you an exceptional welcome and congratulations. Welcome to our newest members. was indicated by the vote, many of our colleagues from the state of New York are not with us because they're attending the funeral of Governor Mario Cuomo. I extend condolences to our colleagues from the state of New York and have extended uh, the sympathies of many in this body uh, to Governor Cuomo's widow, Matilda, and to his family. As an Italian-American, I'm especially proud of his leadership and send extend it Ex uh, sympathies to his family. Thank you, Cuomo family. Thank you, New York delegation. None of us would be standing here without the support and the strength of our families. Today, I'm going to thank my dear husband of 51 years, Paul Pelosi, and my five children and nine grandchildren, <laughs> all the Pelosi's and D'Alessandro. But as we are standing, Let all of us applaud all of our families. <laughs> to my constituents and my Democratic colleagues, to my constituents in San Francisco, I thank you for the privilege of serving in the House. But to my colleagues, I thank you for the honor of serving as leader. But all of us should applaud all of our constituents for sending us here. So let us again applaud our constituents. Each one of us, Mr. Speaker, each one of us, as you know, represents Republicans, represents Democrats, independents, and others. And we should always pay tribute to the American people. The American people have called upon each of them, each of us, to serve them. They have entrusted us with their hopes, their dreams. They have asked us to address their challenges. The financial stability and strong middle of the strong middle class and those who aspire to it is the bedrock of our economy and the backbone of our American democracy. We have a moral imperative to ensure that working men and women enjoy the bounty of their unprecedented productivity and to expand the purchasing families, the purchasing power of families. To that end, today, Democrats will put forward a legislative package to put Americans back to work building our roads and bridges uh, and meeting the needs of the American people, paid for by bringing our tax dollars back home to, and to increase the paycheck of America's working families. We invite our Republican colleagues to join us in supporting the stop corporate expatriation and to invest in America's infrastructure. It's time to stop rewarding companies to move overseas and instead use those dollars to create good paying jobs here at home. We ask for Republican support and action on the CEO Employee Pay Fairness Act legislation to ensure that workers share in the fruit of their productivity, denying CEOs the ability to claim tax deductions on annual income over a million dollars unless they give their employees a well-deserved raise. We must have an economy that works for everyone, not just the privileged few, and we hope Republicans will join us to achieve a better infrastructure and bigger paychecks uh, for the working people of our country. Better infrastructure, bigger paychecks. We opened this 114th Congress in the year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, one of the most consequential pieces of legislation in our history. President Lyndon Johnson and Congress passed it. The President signed it, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and others, along with our own John Lewis, fought for it 
and inspired it. We must continue to the inspire the engagement of every American. It is the vote that pre preserves our democracy, ends injustice, advances dreams, and sustains our freedom. And it's in terms of protecting our freedoms, let us recognize and salute and thank all of those brave Americans who protect our rights, indeed protect all of our liberty, our men and women in uniform, our veterans, and our military families. Mr. Speaker, today we're at the start of a new year and a new Congress with fresh opportunity for the American people. Today is the Feast of the Epiphany, the visit of the Magi. So let us have our own epiphany. For this moment, on this day, we are not just Republicans or Democrats, we are Americans, not just in name, but in spirit standing on the higher ground, higher ground than the last election. And my hope is that in the inevitable exchanges and clashes that may happen in the months ahead, we will not lose sight of the truth this, that is as fresh as this ceremony is today and as historic as our republic, that the ideals that unite us are stronger than the issues that divide us in this House. That does not mean that we are dispensing with all disagreements and dis debates. Our democracy is robust precisely because we have beliefs and we stand proudly, even persistently, for them. And our democracy endures and prevails because in the end, we are humble enough to find a way forward together. So my fellow colleagues of the 114th Congress, let us uphold our deep and different convictions, but let us honor our common obligation to our country. In this Congress, we will do, that, do so under the leadership of Speaker John Boehner. This House will continue to be led by a proud son of Ohio and a happy fan of the Ohio State football team. Yes. <laughs> a man of abiding faith, great heart, and deep dedication, John Boehner is truly a gentleman from Ohio. Congratulations to you, John to Mr. Speaker, to Debbie, your, to your daughters, Lindsay and Tricia, and the entire Boehner family. Thank you for sharing John Boehner with us. Yeah. God bless you and your family, Mr. Speaker. May God continue to bless the members of this House of Representatives. This is the people's house. This is the people's gavel. In the people's name, it is my privilege to hand it to the Speaker of the House for the 114th Congress, the Honorable John Boehner. Mr. Speaker. God bless you, Mr. Speaker. God bless America.